So which peptides should I be taking for inflammation? My joint pain, um, my tendonitis. Here's a question we get asked all the time. Here are the answers. We're gonna break it down for you. Um, first, what is a peptide for those who are just uh, are new to the game here? Peptides are small groups of amino acids. They act on specific enzymes or hormones. They have, um, they have a specific action that they do, which tends to make them a little bit better than anti-inflammatories like NSAIDs or Tylenol or narcotics, obviously. Usually in most cases, they do have um, minimal side effects to them, which makes them very helpful. Peptides, um, especially the ones we're talking about for inflammation, can be given in different ways. And you need to be aware of that and depending on what you're targeting and speak with your healthcare provider in terms of the best way for you to be able to implement them. So in terms of the peptides that are out there, we talk about different things. So if you're talking about inflammation specifically, you can start with the creams. Um, there are some that are in combo in creams. They're gonna target more local areas that are more superficial, maybe a knee or a shoulder or an elbow. But in terms of deeper things like a, a spine or a nerve, then we have pills. Pills are all over the place in terms of how well they function. It's gonna depend on how well and how healthy your gut is. Do you have appropriate digestive enzymes to absorb them? Are they gonna get to the area as well? We can't regulate the dosage as well because it's pretty much the pill, obviously the dosage of the pill is fixed as opposed to an injection or an IV where the dose can be adjusted to whatever your pain level is. Pills are easier for patients who are traveling a lot or don't, have, don't really have the inclination to give themselves a shot. Um, so they can be very helpful. Then we get to injections. So in terms of injections, there are two options that we have. Most patients at home are gonna be injecting themselves what we call subcutaneously in the belly. Um, that's usually going to be going about a thumb's length either side into the belly. Um, this allows us, again, to have more control on dosing. We can usually go a little bit higher dose there. We don't have to worry about the gut health. We don't have to worry about the body's ability to break it down and use it. Um, so that is a really easy way of doing it. Um, the only downside is we're not getting to the actual area. If you have a knee arthritis or shoulder arthritis, we're not putting it in the specific area. So what can happen is we are now able to, again, if you have knee arthritis, we can now put BPC-157, which is one of the favorite um, anti-inflammatory peptides, right in the knee joint. There have been studies that have shown that three to four milligrams of BPC have been helpful when we do it as an injection into the joint. It enables us to go higher dose, enables us to get the medicine right to where the problem is. Um, but again, it's not something you can do at home, it's something you need to do through a healthcare provider. Same thing with the shoulder or into the, the shoulder or the elbow for like a tennis elbow or something. So that's something to be aware of. And then there are IV, there's certain ones of the pain peptides that we can do IV. And that enables us to, again, get higher doses. We, we, we avoid the gut. Um, we can adjust the dose. So there's different ways of doing the pain peptides. There's a lot of nuance to this. In terms of do one, do I do multiple? That's something that takes a little bit, it's an art more than just a science saying, okay, you can do this, this, and this. Knowing which ones you wanna take, know which ones are better for tendonitis, which ones are better for just joint pain, which ones are gonna interact with each other. Example, BPC may affect people who have quote unquote mast cell issues. No matter with most of these peptides, you won't, don't want people doing them for more than three or four months at a time. So there's all these different variables to this, so it's not as cookie cutter as people sometimes make it out to be, but peptides are a very good addition to any um, pain regimen. Again, very minimal side effects. Um, and again, if you can tolerate with injecting yourself, pretty easy to use. And um, again, they can be somewhat costly, but obviously the higher the price, usually the better the quality you're gonna get as you are in most things. So now let's also break it down into what it can treat. A lot of these peptides can do everything from dealing with a joint arthritis to dealing with a tendonitis to helping an injury heal faster like a rotator cuff or an Achilles tendon. They're gonna do all these different things in terms of inflammation and recovery. They're really good at what they do. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So let's talk about BBC 157. That's the one that most people know. It's body protective compound derived from the gut. Um, it does so many things out there. It's gonna help, um, besides healing the gut, again, it does help inflammation heal. Um, we've seen it in the gut, we see it in the muscle, we've seen it in the joint, as, we, as I mentioned, in terms of knee arthritis. Um, I mentioned the one caveat with BPC is that it does in patients who um, are very sensitive to um, certain elements, especially things like red wine or histamine, 
it's not the first choice. But what's good with BBC is we can really push the dose in most people. Again, that's this is something that can be given IV to achieve high doses. Um, but again, this is something that is a very effective in most people. Um, you do want to normally start at a lower dose. I mean, most some people are starting at 400, 500 micrograms and then building up a dose. There are do people who take many, much of a higher dose. That's not really what you need to start with, um, but it, it's definitely helpful. Um, the one that I always tends to go along with it is a product called Thymus and Beta 4. Um, some people know it as TB500, TB which is a derivative of uh, the, the Thymus and Beta 4. Um, they work by boosting actin. Um, a muscle protein, this is really good for helping with recovery post-workout or post-inflammation. Um, they also help regulate the immune system, drive from the thymus. So you're getting multiple benefits from doing a, a thymus and beta-4 or TB500 product. Um, it can, this is something that can also be given within the joint. It's something that can be given IV because um, there are many benefits um, in terms of healing. There are some smaller studies that show that it actually can be helpful for both the lung and the heart as well for dealing with inflammation. So it's a very comprehensive inflammatory product. We'll start with a little bit of a higher dose. It does increase blood flow. Um, both products do, TB4 and TB500, so you do want to make sure that you're not doing it long term because there is a presumed risk, never been shown in study, of cancer. So you don't want to be doing uh, the TB400, TB500 or the TB4 for more than really three months or so. Next product that's kind of been newer on the scene is something called KPV, which is a derivative of something called Alpha MSH. Um, there are other products, older peptides out there. One is called Melanotan 1, Melanotan 2. It used to be called the Barbie peptides that help with inflammation, but they also help with tanning and then people become very tan. Um, there's some people who actually look like the woman from There's Something About Mary. Um, so people wanted the infl inflammatory benefits without having to deal with the, um, the tanning issue. So the KPV was developed. KPV is great because it's so very multifactorial in the sense that it will help with inflammation. It could be combined in a cream with BPC. It could be combined with TB4. Um, for local areas, it could be done into a joint. Um, it is great for gut health. We use it so it's um, beneficial there. We use it with a lot of SIBO patients. We use it with our inflammatory bowel patients. It can be combined with BBC and a product called Arazotype for healing the gut. So it's an anti-inflammatory for the gut. Um, it, it's also great because again, it also will help with autoimmune issues, things that are um, things like psoriasis or rosacea. We've seen some really good benefits from. KPV is a really good product. It's not something that we normally would do. Um, as a uh, IV, um, it's something that's usually started. You can start it once a day or twice a day. Um, it, it's an expensive medication, so you, some people will do one or the other. Um, but usually, um, in terms of dosing, dosing will vary depending on where you're getting it from. It does come in a cream, as I mentioned. It does also come in, in, a, in a belly injection. It also comes in pills. The pills are usually going to be twice a day. They're usually about 500 micrograms a day, give or take. Um, depending on which company you're getting it from. And whatever company you're getting your peptides from, make sure that they have some type of certificate of authenticity, that you know that they're, what, they're show, what they're telling you you're getting is actually what you're getting, or is a company that's actually being regulated by some type of FDA or some regulatory agency. Next one we're gonna talk about is one of my favorite ones in terms of tendons. Um, if you have a tendonitis in terms of like an Achilles tendonitis or a tennis elbow type of situation, um, what's called GHK copper or GHKCU. GHKCU is a natural occurring peptide. It helps the body heal wounds. Um, it helps boost collagen production. Um, it's why we not only we use it for injuries and for, for wounds, we also use it for skin. Um, there are face creams, which is beyond the, the scope of this um, video. Um, there's also you now used for hair, so it has many functions, but in terms specifically in terms of inflammation, it is again, it's great for a, more of a tendon issue or for healing a wound post-surgery. You want to make sure if you are post-surgery, you are discussing this with your surgeon to make sure they're aware that you're on this. If, again, if you're post-healing, you may be able to combine it with a, a CJC or one of the growth hormone peptides as well. Um, but again, those are things you want to discuss with the surgeon to make sure that they're aware that you're on these medications. A GHK comes either in, mostly as an injection um, or as a cream, either for the, for the joint area as well. 
Um, there are not many pills that are out there. There are some that I just find they're not as effective. I find that in some cases we do want to put the GHK copper right in that area. Um, the only thing we, there's a slight risk, you want to make sure your copper levels are within normal limits when using that product, but it's very uncommon to have any issues. Next one we're going to talk about, I mentioned it really briefly with, in terms of wound healing and post-op care, is a CJC, um, which are a growth hormone um, booster peptide. So we know that any, the growth hormone itself is going to help with uh, wound healing, it's gonna help decrease inflammation, it's gonna increase stem cell production, all things that you need to heal well. Um, there are some studies ongoing using traditional growth hormone um, with some knee surgeries, with some rotator cuff surgeries, and uh, the preliminary results have shown that there is an increased risk, uh, increased benefit of using that and an increased rate of healing. Um, what we're trying to do is with the growth hormone peptides, they are not giving you growth hormone directly, they are helping target um, enzymes that help your body produce more growth hormone. You wanna make sure that you're taking them at night. Um, at bedtime, uh, you can take a second dose post-workout if you need to, um, but they are really good for helping with general inflammation. They're really good in helping with pain in the muscles. Um, they're also good, as I mentioned, in terms of healing from everything from a rotator cuff uh, issue to an issue with the knee to an Achilles tendonitis. Again, these are things that you do wanna make sure that you're following your growth hormone levels. We usually don't see dramatic spikes, but it's something that your doctor needs to be aware of. And there is a slight cancer risk. Um, again, never um, presumed. You definitely want, we know there is one with growth hormone. We don't know as much, it's not been fully studied in terms of the peptides. It's something that you do want to make sure you're not using the growth hormone peptides for really for more than three months. Um, there's many growth hormone peptides out there. I mean, the ones that we're usually really using for healing are gonna be CJC and ipamorelin. Um, just in terms, really brief. Um, and, introduction and we'll do more on the growth hormone peptides in, in a specific video. Um, that CJC works on uh, growth hormone receptor hormone, while Ipamorelin works on ghrelin, so they're working on two different sites to help your body in tandem boost growth hormone production. Um, you can also do uh, tesamorelin and Ipamorelin. Um, same, they work on different areas. And then there's some use of a product called AOD9204. AOD9204 is the derivative of growth hormone. Uh, it's a smaller fragment of that. It's been shown to be helpful mostly for joint pain. So it's something that actually comes in a like a viscous thick liquid that we inject into the knee. It can be injected in with um, BPC or other products. Um, that is really where it's helpful. It's not great for systemic inflammation. AOD has also been studied for weight loss. Um, we have not seen huge benefits. Um, now with the products like Ozempic and Monjaro and Mogobi out there, it's not the best option. There's other, plenty of other ways that you can um, achieve anti-inflammatory effects without having to use AOD at this point. A couple other peptides that you wanna be aware of that are really good in, and have their niches um, in terms of inflammation. Um, we're gonna talk about <clears throat> cerebrolysin. Cerebrolysin is a combination of certain brain factors, P21, BDNF. Um, it's a Russian compound that is really great in terms of increasing neuroplasticity, helping patients with concussion and other brain illnesses. Um, we are now having really good success using it for neuropathy. Usually has to be done either injected around the nerve area or could be given IV. We can, IV, we can really push high doses. Um, you can do it as an injection or sub-Q injection. Um, the studies are usually, again, done at higher dosing. Um, but most people cannot tolerate that through an injection. So you can do smaller dose at home. It won't, may not be as effective, but it gives you some benefit with minimal side effects. Um, Cerberolysin is very hard to get at this point. Um, so that's something you want to discuss with your healthcare provider, but really good for some general inflammation. We've seen some benefits. Concussion, it's great. And definitely really good for neuropathy, which is inflammation around the nerve. Another product that we've had really good success with is something called Pentosin. It's initially done um, a product that we use initially for what's called interstitial cystitis, which is a bladder condition, where it helps decrease inflammation there. We are now being able to do that where we can get it um, specifically for, mostly for arthritis in the shoulder or the knee. Again, that is a local injection that's done. Um, it could be done every couple months. Um, it could be combined with AOD, which I mentioned before. It could be combined with BPC. 
Um, it could be sometimes combined with TB4 or TB500. Um, it's a, again, mostly an arthritis product, um, but it's something that has been shown to be very effective. There are more and more studies come out over the last several months that shown that can help. Um, some that can be helpful, as um, we now are knowing more and more with injury, be it with the disc, be it in osteoarthritis, that there is some mitochondrial damage. So we tend to add in either a MOT-C, which is a once a week injection, or an SS31, which can be daily or weekly. Um, I've been shown to be, may, I mean, no, SS31 has just been shown to be very helpful with tendonitis. So there's a whole bunch of peptides. I would really recommend, again, discussing with your doctor to really kind of keep it simple. Start with either BPC or TB4. Um, as your core product. If it's a tendon issue you may want to, or a wound, you may want to throw a GHK in there and then build out. Again, this is something that unless it's something that's very basic, you do want to work with a provider who's very experienced with peptides because the dosing can be all over the place. If you go too high, you may feel worse. Um, if again, especially in the BBC, you can have a mast cell issue. There's patients who've done high doses of TB4, TB500, and they feel kind of groggy. So um, I, again, this is not, a, I, I don't, it's not always a self-starter type of situation. Peptides are great because they play well in the sandbox with other things. Um, they can be used with anti-inflammatory supplements if you're into things like fish oil or curcumin or berberine um, or NAD or any of those things. It can also be um, used with anti-inflammatories if have to. Um, don't love them with steroids. Um, they could be used with red light, hyperbaric, all those types of things. So those are things to definitely consider. Um, again, definitely you can start with the creams initially. If it's something deeper, definitely look at doing either an injection into the belly or an injection that you're doing into the joint itself. And obviously it's not something you could be doing at home. Don't try it. Um, I've had patients do it and make things worse, cause a nerve issue, um, cause, more, cause more inflammation. Work with a healthcare provider, makes things easier, much quicker response. So peptides are definitely gonna be part of the future and actually in current practice in terms of inflammation, dealing with joint injuries, dealing with osteoarthritis, dealing with disc issues. They can be combined with things like stem cells and exosomes, um, and which are now becoming part of the common practice. One of the things that's not a peptide, but um, look at bioregulators. Um, there are those are very specific. They smaller amino acid groups that work at very specific areas. There's one for joint. There's one for lung, there's one for heart, and again, they play well in tandem. Usually it's done daily for a month or so, and then you can do them like, a, like for 10 days the following months to help really augment the benefit. And then also, they, you're probably hearing soon, you're starting to hear it now, there are some people using rapamycin, which is an mTOR inhibitor and for inflammation and joint pain. This is still being studied. The studies initially are very good. The one thing that we're really seeing good benefit with, and some data is out, is actually in gum and jaw inflammation. Um, that's probably one of the first things that we'll see it with. Please put any questions in the comments about peptides and inflammation. Can't give any specific medical advice out though. Stay tuned for more videos on this channel and subscribe below.